Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, we were discussing here in the base measures some Shemitah issues. Um, so well, let's pause a moment with Shemitah. We'll discuss some things about, uh, as we do normally, uh, Dvar Torah, and then we'll go back to Shemitah, and then we'll discuss, uh, and then I'll hear any questions. Um, something very amazing uh, we saw on, uh, during Cholamoy this year. Uh, so I'll start with that, and then short Dvar Torah as well. Um, we had, we took a tour, actually, our son, our other son, uh, Amichai, who's now in the army, uh, he had sook us off. He had sook us off because he volunteered to take Yom Kippur. Wow. Yom Kippur in the army, so he got sick, so it was a good trade-off. Wow. Uh, because in Kippur, anyway, you don't do much. Uh, so he didn't do much in the army, meaning you pray all day long, so you pray all day long he in the army. Have a minion where he, wasn't he, he did, he did, he did. Oh. Even a big minion, a big yeah. minion, yeah. 70 fellows or something. Yeah, yeah, very nice minion. Four different shivots. Uh, very nice. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Um, right. Sometimes you know, it could be without Who did? Who did? Your son. Yeah, yes. Son Twelve was people. The, That's uh, it. Wow. He did come in. Yeah, but Makom Shainish. Yeah, to be, to become. Yeah. Very, very good. One of his nice. Wow. Wow. He really felt spiritual. Yeah, to be part of it. He was a part of it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so the son of mine uh, took a short course of being a tour guide in the Europa Muslimi, in the Muslim quarter, to go around the ten gates to Harabait. It's wow. not to, not the ten, not the gates of Ayatika of the old city, right. which is the gates we're more familiar with, Shah Yafo. Not all those, rather the inside, more, much more deeply, deeper inside, where you get to see the 10 gates to Harabite, mm. where we mustn't go in. Uh, first of all, nine out of 10 are closed for Jews. Jews can't pass nine out of 10 of them. Even open? I don't even know. They're open for, to, for well, Arabs, could, yes. Most of them, most of them, except for two. No, actually, three. The ones on the east side, which are closed, and the ones, and, and one, two on the east side, and one on the uh, south side. Mizrach and Darom, those are closed. Those are blocked with, I mean, physically with blocks, with, with, with stone, uh, you just can't go through them. Right. But all those are open. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would sign up for it. Wow, wow. Okay, think about it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll take you on it. We'll take you on it. Right, right, right. It's amazing. It's 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 really really special. You get to see some of the gates are on top of the of harabite, meaning of the of the floor of the harabite. I mean, you get to see. Yeah. Well, from the kotel level. Yeah, it's much higher than the kotel level. Much higher, you, you right. climb up you get to see <coughs> the floor level of the Azara. You see the Azara, see where the Azara was, <coughs> and you're just a few meters away. Really, really special. And there's one, um, it's called Beit Salam. It's a uh, it's a building occupied by Jews within the Muslim quarter. Jewish families live in that building, <coughs> purchased it. To, from the Arabs. Um, no, okay, thank you. Okay, no, never mind. It's okay. It's, it's okay. I have this uh, in between season uh, allergies. Uh, give me this cough. Anyway, so from there, uh, you climb up that building, you go on the roof of the building, you get to see entire Harabite in front of you from over, over, uh, you know. See a, a, a very wide area where you see exactly where they they flatten the, uh, the the mountain where they where they have their uh, big mosque uh, the uh, gold uh, and you see the flat area all around it. It's mamash mamash to see. It's patazara. I told him, I told my son that really we should make kriya, should tear kriya. 
because seeing it's bat azara, that's we really tear kriya, and it's definitely not in our possession uh, really because the waqf does whatever they, whatever they want and they're controlling it. It's really churban. You see the churban in front of your eyes, but it was chalamoy, so you don't tear kriya on chalamoy. Otherwise, it's it's really a spot to tear kriya. Anyhow, so the amazing thing that uh, he showed us when you go around the eastern side. Harabite. So really the wall around the city is the same wall around Harabite. Most of the, uh, the two other sides, the western side and the northern side, there are walls that are, uh, well, actually the Kotel, the Kotel is the wall around Harabite, not the wall, the wall around uh, the old city, because the wall around old city goes much further out Shah uh, Yafo and Shah Tzio and Shah Shpot. That's where you see the wall around the city. You go further in, you see the Kotel. So the Kotel is really the wall around Harabite. It's not the wall of Beit Samikdash. People get confused sometimes. They think it was the wall of Beit Samikdash. That's not true. It's the wall of Bait. Within it was Beit Samikdash, uh, further in. So uh, when you get to the eastern side, exactly opposite of the Kotel, on the other side of the mountain, opposite of the Kotel, where it faces Harazesi. Mount Alves is right, is right there behind you when you're walking and when you're facing uh, the eastern wall. Behind you is Harazesi. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, you see something amazing. First of all, the gates there to Harabite. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, Amen. Ah, perfect. Go ahead. Um, so when you're, first of all, the gates there are those that are blocked uh, with, with bricks. You can't walk inside. That's Shah Hamim and Shah Mizrach. Two gates there that uh, supposedly are meant to be open when Mashiach comes. Yeah, Mashiach will go through them. Uh, that's supposedly the tale that they say they, uh, they, they told about, about those gates. So no one goes in from that direction, although there are, uh, unfortunately, it's a whole base of Kvaros. There's a whole cemetery there of Arab tombs right in front of it. And they say the reason is, the reason they're buried there is because that was out of the city. That was like outside of the city for them. Today, the city is much, much wider, includes all those areas, but it used to be that the city was surrounded with a wall, and that was outside of the wall, so that's where they buried their dead. So, uh, unfortunately, that's what we find when you yeah, walk through that. It's not present. It's actually still present. It's still oh, yeah. present, so yes. Just, they still use it. Do people oh. bury... My son told me sometimes he has a group that he takes him on a tour, and it's within a funeral. They have a funeral oh, okay. right there and that. Yeah, even currently. Yeah. I don't know how they choose... It's like, I guess it's like for us, Harazes, it's right. like a special, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yichus, yeah. 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 right. It's probably very Yichus wow. people. Yeah, right, right. According to them, you know, Muhammad, he took this horse there. Oh, yeah? yeah. Right yeah. then. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Maybe he was getting his horse from the Mecca or something. Along those lines. From there, went to Mecca. Could so be. Magical yeah, okay. <laughs> Fairy tales, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so something very, very, very amazing we saw there. He told us if you look at the wall, from a perspective uh, further away, you look at the entire wall, you see the shrubs that grow uh, precariously on the wall, like you see in the Kotel also, all these shrubs growing uh, on the wall. So if you look carefully, and when you see it, actually, it's very clear. My daughter took a picture of it, and the picture you see very clearly. The shrubs, no one touched them. They're very high up on the wall. No one organized them in a certain way. No one... Trim, trim them in a, in a certain way. You see the, the growth represents, you see, you see it actually in your eyes. You see shrubs growing like the letter Yud, like that, like duck, duck, like that. I have to send this to you, uh, whoever has WhatsApp, I can send it through my wife's uh, phone. So you see a Yud, and then you see a certain distance away, the letter Hay, the huge letter Hay with the shrubs. And then the same amount of distance Vav, oh. it's just oh, unbelievable, it's unbelievable. Right. It's Yud K Vav, and then the final hay doesn't appear. There's no final hay, 
it has just the beginning of some growth there also. The beginning of a growth there that I guess will spread eventually. <laughs> wow. It's unbelievable. Amash unbelievable. So we said that and Hashem Shalem, and Akitsa Shalem, Achi Machedza was Shalem Malik. The name of Hashem isn't complete until a Malik is destroyed, until the evil uh, forces are destroyed. So in the meantime, the name is getting not getting Malik. close, but wow. it's not Shalem yet. And uh, I also we noticed because usually you say Yud K, Yad Al Kes Ka, Chamal Hashem Malik Midodo. So Yud K is the incomplete form of Hashem's name. Which is a name on its own. That's why we don't say the letters Yud and Hey one after the other. We say Yud K. So it's a, f- a short form of Hashem's name. But Yud K Vav is something usually not used anywhere. It's either Yud K or Yud K Vav K. But I noticed in the Hoshanot, uh, the the Yiratzon that we say after we clap five times with the Aravos. There's a rats on there that Hashem should accept our tefillos and that should be namtika dinim and make it sweet for us and all that. So there, if you noticed, it says shmo, and then in brackets it says yud kei vav shalem. So there, Dafka uses those three letters mm-hmm. out of the four that are incomplete, and we're wishing that Hashem will complete His name and He will show Himself uh, outwardly and. and Reveal himself to the world. So there is a use uh, that one time that I noticed that uh, we use UK Vav. Anyhow, it's it's really uh, unbelievable. So that's uh, that's amazing. Can you send but, uh, that out? Can I send that out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll try to send that to a few people here on uh, Zoom if, and in I the think base I, have one's number. If, I know you sent things to your wife. So right. You What's that? To me. Okay. Can then you can send to all the rest. To you. Terrific. And we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. My daughter oh, took a picture of it. And it looks, you see it very obvious in the picture. It looks, it looks even better than in real life. You should make that into a picture. Yeah, right, you know, right, like right. Shoes and, you know, right, no wow. 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 I'm willing to get money to have somebody water the last one. <laughs> 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 wow, 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 wow. <laughs> but that's not fair because then you're <laughs> forcing it to grow. Uh, want it to happen naturally. Uh, it's a and a shame's pace. Huh? Uh, he, 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 Rabbi, I don't think he's a drug drug. So we want to do the Akishena. Okay. 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 If we believe that's going to do it, then yeah, you're right. Why not? Water's okay, not for the water. I'm not blowing up the mosque. It's water. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for speed purposes, on speed. Yeah. <laughs> I have an Arab do it for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's very high up, also, to get down a whole Good. Very really long ladder. And a race itself. Maybe I will come. <laughs> well, that was clean up today. <laughs> yeah, it's really unbelievable. Anyway, uh, they were all. Uh, all kinds of other facts that he, or explanations that he gave us there on each on each uh, gate. It's very very nice. It's a very nice tour. Okay, okay anyhow, uh, but just an idea. Uh, um, first, I'd like to remind everyone, and I, as usual, every uh, an annual thing I do. Uh, I've said this, I'm sure, in previous years, uh, to try to find time. To go through, it's a very short introduction of the Hamik Davar and the Reishis. You had to, you had to do it. You had to do it every single year to remind yourself of what uh, what he says there. What's that? Hayisharim, exactly, exactly. He speaks about what Yashus means, what what being uh, straight and and, and uh, uh, he even says that it's. It's 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 the basic basic uh, attribute of a person before he becomes a tzaddik and a chassid. He has to be honest and straight with his with his thinking, and that's where he goes through the idea that uh, unfortunately by Cheney, he says people were tzaddikim. They were doing Torah 
Milus Hasadim and Avoda. All three things that the world stands on, they were doing. Uh, we would think they were, they were perfect people uh, the way Hashem wants us to be. But he says they weren't Yesharim. They weren't straight. They weren't honest. They weren't uh, sincere about things. And what does that mean? We know about Sinas Chinam. So he says there that they had disrespect towards those who are different than them. That's when you're not acting Yashus. What's that? Thank God things have changed a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you must have changed a little, at least, if, you are, if you're saying it sarcastically. So a little bit they must have changed, because otherwise we would not be here today. Uh, uh, so, uh, right. At least the Be'ita is here. Uh, the Achishena, we're not Zoha yet. But uh, he goes through, a, it's an amazing one-page introduction of the Hamik Davar, the Natsiv, to his Perush on commentary on Bereshis. So it's a must to read through every single year. You go through it just to refresh uh, our mind of how to behave towards one another. And even though people seem different than us and, and, and doing things that are almost opposite that we believe in, still, you must have respect. You must understand that every person, every individual has their uh, uh, necessity in the world and, their, and, and their, their, they add to, to the great puzzle of, uh, of the existence of, of the world and, and, and of the advancement of the world. Uh, in different ways. He even quotes there of uh, Avram Avinu praying for Sdom, which are completely opposite of what he stood for. He stood for Chesed, Midas Chesed and Rachamim, and they stood for cruelty. They were cruel, evil people. Yet he prays for them and he argues with Hashem several psukim. If they're Hamishim, 50 tzaddikim, 45, 40, 30, 20, 10, and only then he gives up. After he can't find 10. Siddiq even stone, then he gives up. But he, he's arguing, let them live. Keep them alive. There, there's a purpose for them as well. Not to get off the tangent, but yeah. the Archer Haram and Kibbeha. Yeah. That, that's not a possibility that David Levin made up. That's not something David Levin made up. <laughs> yeah. Huh? <coughs> <coughs> right. How does that go hand in hand? So, Biata Hara, but not Haraim. Mm. Meaning, <coughs> yeah, that's how. Bruya, the wife of Rabbi Meir, fought us. When it says, Not necessarily. It's true, but it's not necessarily only true for Jews. I agree. Not really. There was, they're also created by Hashem. There's a meaning for every human being, every even Gentile, non Jew, also. They also have a meaning. They also have a reason to exist. The, yeah, of the, the moment they have a, re, the moment they have a, a certain strength, certain power to do things in a cruel manner, you, there's a way, although it's difficult, but there's a way to change them and to channel their, their attributes, their talents, their, 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 their strengths, their powers to do good, to do good. And that's all you want. You want to, for people to realize the proper way to live, the right way to do things. And then they're going to use their same power and strength to be cruel. They're going to use it to be good. And that's what Avram Vina was striving for, to teach the world how to behave in the good way. Identify it. Hashem? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we know that they had no chance of that's what Hashem was telling Avram Avinu. These specific people of Stom have no chance to correct their ways, no chance to do good. That's why I have to destroy them. But Avram, from his point of view, he doesn't know that. We don't know who, who can or who can't change their ways. So we have to take we have to give the benefit of the doubt to every single human being that maybe they can change and they can be good. And we have to try to preach and teach in that direction. How do you square that with 2,000 years, 2,000 years of persecution of Gentiles in a single day? How do you put that together? It's a long, long, long process. Yaakov 
יעקב said to Esav, עד אשר אבוא אל אדמי שעירה, meaning it is a long, long, long route until he can reach, uh, to, to meet him once again. Come to see here, meet him once again. He was sent off track by thinking that it's soon he'll come over, but really he meant at the end of the day. Uh, Ishmael did tshuva even in his lifetime. He did tshuva. Although his descendants haven't yet, uh, all the Muslim world, uh, a lot of them are still very mean and cruel and bad to us, or to, uh, to the world in general. But uh, it's a long, long, long process. And by the way, Hashem was using them all those generations to, to, to punish Jew, us Jews in order to get us on track. And we should realize that we're not doing the right thing. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been successful in their persecution. The Holocaust had a reason. We don't know what the reason is. We can't even fathom how can it be that six million Jews were punished so cruelly and so terribly with children and women and everyone. And I can't explain it, but there must be a reason that we deserved the Holocaust. So it's all, Hashem is using all this to lead the world to its final destination. And he uses them as Shevet Api. The Navi says they're Shevet Api. They're the stick of my anger. I mean, they're they're there to, to hit to hit us to, 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 to get us into the right direction. So yeah, we don't know things. So we have to take from Yesharim. That's what the Nitzir tells us. We have to take from this that we should try our best to give people the benefit of the doubt and teach them the proper way, not give up on them and decide they're just bad people, they're cool people. Forget it, let them die, let them be destroyed. There's no reason for them to be That's not the way. And Kol Shekin, Kal Vachomer, Ben Nosel Kal Vachomer within the Jewish people. Like David said before, that uh, those were Jews. By Buria, she was saying, Itamu Chateim, but not Chotim. We want the sins to go away, to be erased, to be demolished, but not the sinners. Sinners should still live after they perfect their ways, after they correct their ways. They should live, exist. Why, why pray for them to die? Like a mayor was praying for them to die. He said, no, pray for their sins to stop. Pray for them to correct their ways. Thousand percent. Oh, correct. Look from Paro, that's not look from Paro, that's that's not true. That's exceptional. There are exceptional cases where it's not true, but normally that's no, what it's trying. Ninety-nine percent. Ninety-nine point nine percent. Uh, yeah, I, I can't. I, mean, I, I, I don't know I exactly know, the I'm numbers, but in our eyes, it's as if hundred percent. That's what I was going to say because it's not. We don't know who has shown exactly. Can exactly. So I think the message to us is a hunt. It's hard. It's I can't do it. Like when I see a crime, and you say this person, right? But. Somehow you have to believe 100%. Hashem. Right. You need to take the Dara from Abraham Exactly. Exactly. And Yitzhak and Yaakov. Yeah, double, double. Yeah, I said before. He had, uh, yeah, he has the numerous examples, the Natsiv of Yitzhak and Yaakov, always praying for, 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 for the better, for the good of people. Look back at what happened to his children. He would have the same attitude. <laughs> um, we, we have some element. Of we, we must believe so, but being, no, no. I mean, in other words, it, you know, it's one thing for. I'm not going to say it, but you know what I mean. Man. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's one thing to have Theoret- theoretical. To, have, yeah, yeah, to feel everyone's good. Right. And, and then right. Two thousand years of killing and slaughtering your children. Yeah. yeah. Have the same. Right. right. That's an interesting question, but the Nazi uh, thinks I know, so. I know. It's, a, it's a question, but it's not a... Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, the Nazi believes so, because he uses those as examples of how to behave today. The Nazi lived 100 years ago, 70 years ago. 
He wasn't an ancient guy, a person from the days of Avraham Avinu. And he's still using Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov as the models for our behavior. Way for us to be able. Definitely, definitely, let, let's put the goyim aside right now. <laughs> More important is that we, discuss, we, we, we have this attitude towards Jews, towards our fellow Jews. That's what he's mainly talking about. He says, even the goyim of Rishayim, the Rishayim know how to behave properly towards them. But he begins with talking about just our fellow Jews, fellow our nation, that uh, we must respect one another, we must uh, uh, give everyone the benefit of the doubt that uh, they don't know better, and that they, they would like to do the right thing, and learn from each other different attributes, different ways that uh, are complementary. So I'll just say one more, one more point that the Natsiv also mentions, and this has to do with uh, much more private domain of husband and wife. The beautiful Natsiv, which I think also straightens out the Yashrit, the Sharim, be straight, to be honest, to be uh, sincere about uh, marital life, about uh, couples, and how to live properly uh, uh, within our homes. Uh, it's a Natsiv in the Mekdavar, and Eselo Ezrik Lot Tover Hadam Levado, Eselo Ezrik Yenegdo. Also, this is Parsha. So Rashi quotes Chazal famously saying, if Ezer, so it's not Yenegdo, it seems contradictory. If, if the woman is, is there to help the man, she's not there to fight. Yenegdo means the opposite, to go against. Uh, her husband. So Rashi quotes Chazal saying, Zacha Ezer, Lo Zacha Kenegdori Lachem. Meaning, if he's worthy, if he's a tzaddik, if he's, uh, uh, if he's uh, rewarded to have a good wife, then she's Ezer, then he feels she's with him, she helps him, she's uh, always together on things, and not fighting one another. Lo Zacha Kenegdo. He's not worthy, if he's not a tzaddik, then Hashem sets him up with a woman who's always against him, always fighting, always arguing, uh, so on and so forth. So firstly, I heard years ago from Rabbi Elisha Vishlitsky, who was my rabbi uh, in the areas of Emuna and, 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 uh, and uh, Musa and all that. So he once explained very beautifully that there's a famous Rav Dessler who speaks about that uh, if a man and woman it sounds like have luck, zachu, they won the lottery and it goes well for them, then there's shechina between them. Because the word ish has the letters alef, yud, shin, so there's a yud there with, besides the alef and, and shin, esh, fire, there's a yud there, and isha has also the, the letters aleph shin, but there's a hey there. So yud k, as we spoke before, Hashem's name is between them if they're behaving properly towards one another, so they have the shechina with them. Lo zachu, if it turned out for them not to have, not to be rewarded by Hashem to be have a have a good life, so esh chaltan, there's fire between them. There's always arguments, always fighting, always problems challenges, and so on. So, Rav Dessler explained that it's not to win the lottery. It's not that you got lucky to have a good wife, or you got unlucky to have a bad wife. It's zaku. Instead of zaku, you have to read it zaku. You put a dagesh, you put a dot in the kaf. What does that mean? From the word zach. Zach, tahor, naki. When you're pure, when you're uh, cleansified, when you're tzaddik, that's, that's the word zaku. So when they're both um, on a level of tzaddikus, of righteous people, then shechina benem. But if lo zaku, if they're misbehaving in their spiritual ways, level, not on a high spiritual level, so then esho chaltan. So says Rabbi Elisha Vishlitsky, it's really... It's not a punishment for the fact that they're not zaku, for the fact that they're not pure yet, not righteous yet. It's 
כנגדו להילחם, meaning it's a way to lead them to become zakuk. When things aren't going well, so they have to stop and think, why, why, aren't, why are we always fighting? Why isn't it going well for us? And then they have to decide to change their ways, to be better human beings, better people. And by that, they become zaku, they classify their ways, whether it's ben adel mako, ben adel havero, whichever, in any course of life, they perfect themselves. And the moment they perfect themselves, they become uh, ezer. And it becomes ezo, then it become, then they live together happily and, and, and peacefully. So it's it's not, it's it's on one side negative, but it's really to lead them to the positive, to be more positive, uh, on a positive uh, uh, track of life. Uh, sometimes, unfortunately, they don't get the message. They think if they're fighting all day long, so they don't fit each other, and then they get divorced. Really, the message is, to perfect your ways to, 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 to learn how to be better human beings, better people towards one another and towards Hashem. If that happens, then shechina b'neim, and then you have a peaceful life. So that's Rashi. But the Natsiv, Hamik Davar, he explains something amazing. He says like this. Ishri Shazachu, sorry, um, the, other, the other saying. Eselo um, Ezek Zacha Ezer, that's simple. The moment uh, you're a good person and you're a righteous person, so your wife is helpful towards you. Lo Zacha Kenegdo. He says like this. What does that mean? That if you're not pure, you're not plentified, you're not holy, you're not spiritually in the right level, then she's against you. But he says like this. He says, let's say a person he gives this mashal, he gives this parable, a story about, uh, to explain his idea. Let's say a person comes home from work one day and he's miserable and he's sad and he's angry and didn't, it wasn't a good day for him at work. So his wife asks, what happened? He says, my boss yelled at me. I didn't do things, uh, I didn't do it the right way. I came late, uh, this and this and that. And my friends made fun of me uh, at work because I was clumsy or I didn't do the right thing and I made mistakes and made fun of me. Terrible day. My coffee spilled over, everything went wrong. So there are two ways to react. His wife can react in two ways. One way, which most probably that's what he wants, that's what he would prefer that she, the way that she would react this way, is when she would, say, she would say to him, your boss is nuts. What does he want from you? You're such a great guy. You do everything perfectly. I know really who you are. And I admire you, and you're the best guy in the world. And d- d- just ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And your friends are jealous of you. That's why they make fun of you, because you're so great. And the coffee happened to spill this day. It doesn't matter, really. Nothing happened. Uh, you didn't get any stain on you. You're all fine. So that's one way to react. That's the way he would he'd be more pleased if his wife would react that way. He's fed up with, 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 with that day was terrible for him, and now she's calming him down and soothing him and, and uh, being friendly towards him and making him feel good. So that's one way to react. The other way, he comes home with the same issues at work. And then she says to him, you know, there's something there. Your boss has something, something there that, that, that you may need to think about. Why don't you try to get up a little earlier and be there on time? Or why don't you try to make more, to make more effort not to make mistakes and things like that? Uh, and your friends, yeah, there, there's a point there. The, the, you know, you, you come to you, so they make fun of you, so try to be more. Now that, uh, for the gut reaction of the husband will be, what are you, what's going on here? You're also against me? Not enough. I had my boss, my friends, the coffee, everything against me. You're also adding fire to the, to the situation? You're all saying wood to the fire? What's going on? And they'll start arguing and fighting. You know, they'll go nuts. And they'll say, I don't want to talk to you anymore. You go to sleep and he doesn't want anything to do with her. It says in the Tzim the first reaction, the type of wife that reacts 
calm him down and give him a good feeling. Everything's okay. Don't worry. And you're the great guy. On one hand, the, the, the immediate pleasure that he gets from such a wife is tremendous. Because that's what he wants to hear. On the other hand, she's not really helping him out. It's going to happen over and over again. And he'll never correct his ways. Because she's, she's always ignoring the imperfection that her husband really has. But if she reacts that second way, the second manner of kenegdo, kenegdo, that's really the best, the, the, the most correct, the, the, the best reaction possible. Because that's going to help him change to change and be and perfect himself and to be a better person. So the lo zacha is kenegdo, is kenegdo in order to get to, to reach to zacha. In order to reach a higher level, a better level, a more perfect level, or perfect uh, style of life, because his wife, now she'll do it very gently. She won't be like the boss to yell at him and scream at him and make fun of him. She'll do it very gently, but she'll guide him slowly to eventually reach a better spot in life, be a better worker. So that's why the lachem kenegdo is really what he needs in order to be a better person. There were no coincidences. But yeah. I just something very interesting. Yeah. Yesterday's Daf Yomi, Tana Rabbana, Gimel Chayehen, Enam Chayim. There are three types of people whose lives are not, not like, considered living. Yeah. And what is one of the examples? Misha Ishto Moshe Lodalad. One whose wife rules over it. His wife rules over it, yeah. right. So that, 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 that doesn't, that, life's not worth living. That's right, right, right. That was Daf yesterday's Daf. Wow. Uh, very, wow. very, to, you know, yeah, yeah, but there it's in a negative way, right? That's something negative there because your life isn't a life, meaning you're miserable because she's right. controlling you. Right. Here we're talking about no, Rashi says, leading you. If you have a bad one, just connect them. One, one, one back to Rashi, forget the Nitzis. Ah, the Rashi's yeah. explanation, right? The Rashi. We're right, the, the simple Rashi, not the, the way Rabbi Elisha explained Rashi. Rashi. Not that it seems finished. Yeah, right, right, okay. right. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true, but we have to believe that it's not stum. Hashem doesn't stum send your wife who's controlling you and making you miserable. There has to be, I think the Natsiv and the way Rabbi Elisha explained Rashi, the most similar now, it has to be true, meaning it all has to do with yourself. If your wife is controlling you and making you miserable, it means you need to Perfect something. And Morgan gives several examples of rabbis whose wives were, were very special. They divorced. Right, right. He gives several right. examples, not one or two. Those, right, I remember list. that. Yeah, With list. those examples. And the son told the father. Right. The opposite. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah, it was a whole bunch of. Yeah, right. And this woman, she was so bad, but he ended up giving her some stuff anyway when she was married. Uh -huh. there's, there's a lot of stories about that. Yeah, that's we're true. We're not Catholics. The reason why we look right, people right, people. right. <laughs> Right, it's true. But again, it's like the same as we said before with the Shari. We have to do our best to uh, to work the way we can work it out, to try to work it out most properly. If in the end that's the destiny, that's uh, the way Hashem decided for us, so that's it, then we, we give up. But until we get to that point, we have to do our best to sustain our marital life and to grow together and have growth in our marital life from one another and each other to, to, to use one another. It's very obvious that a man and a woman are very different just by the fact that he's a man and she's a woman. It's, it, that itself inherently makes a major Sorry, difference. The world takes care of that nowadays. Very sad, very sad. To ignore the differences and think they're all the same the exact creature. It's ter terrible. But, uh, and besides that, the background is different and, and the uh, talents are different. Like any uh, two people are different from one another. Yeah, we're living together 24 7 for a long, long life, hopefully. So there's a lot to learn from one another. And when she sees things one way and he sees things another way, they're both correct. It's not, it's not. It's almost never right or wrong, right and wrong. It's, it's right and right from different perspectives. 
And we have to learn from one another. Why is that correct from her perspective? Why is that correct from my perspective? And try to make it together to, to, to reach a, a third option that's, that includes both. I just heard last night on radio while watching this is uh, there was someone who was giving a shear. So he spoke about, he gave a nice mashal, a nice parable for that too. He says, if you place four people on four sides of a building, okay, it's a, it's a big building, a uh, diameter is very big. So you place four people and you tell each one to look at the side of the building that they're on and to describe it later on to everyone. So, well, you're not, you're not telling them that you have four people on, on four sides. You're, not, you're putting them, placing them on four sides of the building and you say, please look at the building and describe what you saw. So then you come all together, they come all together in the same room and you say to each one, describe what you saw. One, this, one will describe that there are windows all along the wall of the building and it's built with these and these bricks and, and these and these soagim, uh, the rails, soagim, the, uh, the uh, railing. The railing, uh, yeah. The on the bars. window, right. the bars, bars, right. Metal, metal bars. bars on the window and you saw the type and the yeah. color and all that, okay. The other guy says, I saw this huge doorway, an entrance, and uh, and I saw uh, some windows that had any bars. It seemed like they're uh, the ones of the staircase going all the way up to the, all the floors. Okay, the third one says, I saw many porches jotting out of the building and each one has a porch. The fourth one says, I just saw a wall. There's nothing there, no windows. No wall. Now, each one of them is describing the building he saw but they saw a different side of the building. So all four are, 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 are right. And we need all four to have a complete picture of the building. Without all four, we don't have a complete picture of the building. Perspective. So it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful yeah. mashal to show that, uh, that sometimes have, we look at life, a different perspective. And uh, a wife and us, uh, we have different perspectives of the same situation. Sometimes looking at the same side of the building, and yet we see different things on the same side of the building. Some uh, put an emphasis on this and this, the bricks, and the other one on the bars, and the other one on the height, and the other one on the width. Each one looks at something, emphasizes something else on the same side of the building. So, and that not, no one's wrong. All correct. So the truth lies amongst uh, when, when we Connect all of the perspectives together. That's when you find the ultimate truth. This is to be more uh, accepting and patient with other people's perspectives of life and of situations. And then we learn from one another different perspectives and we grow to a greater truth. See a greater truth than we see from our, from our own private perspective of life or everything. Okay, these are big teachings. Uh, we just had to live up to these up to these ways. And we'll have much more truth for life. Okay, so now back to Shemitah. So there the question where we say I'm yes, I'm sure, 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 sure. Uh, we say before. Um, clarify. Mm -hmm. I've been through a few Shemitah mm -hmm. in Israel, and um, so most people who have uh, trees or uh, gardens and they uh -huh. might have some something growing uh -huh. are fruit trees as far as I know. Most right. people don't have vegetables. Right, right. So there's this idea of, of making your area half care and people coming in. Correct. I'm, I'm looking at my trees. These fruit are not Shemitah fruit as far as I can tell because they're quite this size. It's uh -huh. Roshana came. Right. They were Hanat. What's the word? Hanat, Hanat? right. Hanat. They were blossom right. tree. So you so don't need I don't to have enough. Yet. It's, it's actually Correct. I have to take some ice from them because they're Correct. Shishi. They're shishi. Correct. Sixth year. Correct. No health so, yet. So right. I, I've seen a sign already, maybe maybe more signs. It's actually a little bit misleading to people. I mean, it's uh -huh. nice. You can put up a sign, but it's wrong because the fruit that they should not come in and they have care. It's 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 and it's high and Okay, that's very true. true. Very true. So at one point, yeah. so two questions then. So then I kick into the Shemitah. Right. So at what point? And then I have this bigger issue. I'm not a farmer who labels these fruit. Yeah. 
I have some of them are still there's a hundred on a tree. Wow. I, I asked somebody if there's an application as a joke. Can I take a picture <laughs> and have a mark? I will. I have this in the past, and basically, I let food just go. I don't have an answer. It's like I'm wow. like in the quantity. Okay, which food? I have grapefruit, pomelo. I'm not oranges, whatever. Like, yeah. And there's there's a hundred at least on the trees that are green in this side. I don't want they lost. Right. No, these are for sure the ones. Up, but I don't know in four months from now. You know, there's gonna be many. It's not seasonal. That they it, it can't, come on it a tree like a seasonal. Season. But, but wait, so yeah. when should we to kick in? The new blossom. The new blossom. For the Rosh moment the blossom. Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. So, so I can't guarantee yeah. that there won't be some come still blossoming. I can't guarantee that. I, I'll look carefully, but you know what I mean? I don't even know how professional farmers do it. What is your question? You know? Two questions. One is yeah, well, two sure, parts. Sure, sure, which yeah. are, one is people put out signs that I did in the past. Also, it's Hefker come take because that's Shrit, it's the Halacha. You can't do that on the six. Rabbi, I have to remember, after there's no chuma on my side, correct? Correct. Right. correct. I thought you did Shmita add something no about this. There is some uh, meiser on it. I thought it was added. I heard in the shir a few weeks ago. I never did it before, so it was something new. I heard there's no chuma on my side. No, we said no chuma on my side. But we said that if there are uh, vegetables, let's say that okay. were now uh, likita, also gives them the. Didn't have shvit. We were talking about something that did grow during the shmita year. Which masters? Which masters do you give it? In what situation? Ah, let's talk. Let's say uh, situation of hetemechira. Right, that was my next question. In the grocery store, that I have mechira. Right, they so they're not have care. So you need to because they're not have care. Right. Why? Well, so they must do that. Right. Do it accordingly. So, right, because you're not you're not selling it to a guy. Now, those who hold it, it's a little complicated. Those who hold that en kinyan nochi lafkia mikdushat arts, meaning. And even though you sold it to a guy, that's at the Mechir, you sold the land to a guy, and then you can do all the work normally, on, 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 even on a Shemitah year, because you don't own it. It's owned by a guy. But the guy doesn't have the ability, even the ownership of a guy doesn't have the ability to take away and do the Kedusha of the land. So it's still Chayv to Muslim masters. It's, it's not, not Shmita, but it's high to Muslim Masra. And then you have Maisa Ani. Because that's the seventh year where there are no other Trumos in Maisa, except for Maisa Ani. No, no, we have the, all the rest too. Oh, okay. Fine. All the rest too. Just, just the cycle. We, normally we talk right. about six year cycle. Right, right, right. The Ani is third and sixth, and the Shani is first, second, uh, fourth, fifth. Right. So what about Shmita? The seventh year is never part of the cycle because normally you don't take right. it to Muslim Masra. Right. Or in this case of Eta Mechira, you would need to take the Masros because it's not Shemitah, because the guy owns the country, owns the land. So you just, uh, so you take out all Tumas Masros, Tumagdola, Tumas Meiser, Meiser Rishon, and Meiser Ani. The decision was by Boaz Poskim is that Meiser Ani. Because it makes sense, the Torah made that year a year for Nachlui Venei Amecha. It meant, it's meant to be all the produce for the Ani, for anyone to collect. So at least if you're not keeping Shemitah because of Hetem Mechira, at least give the Anim the tenth of the produce, uh, not my Sersheni, which is for yourself. That's the case. But otherwise, it's not, not too much. Going back to Jewish, I can't to, right. guarantee, guarantee it's seasonal perfectly that there's nothing that's still blossoming. Yet. I can't, I can look, I don't know what to say. Like in the course of three months, I, I, I always thought a little more grows because I don't follow that it stops here and stops there. Uh -huh. But is there any role? Is there anything you can go by? Or, or you're just stuck? Yes, yeah, it's a good question. By the way, it happens to anyone who has a home tree. I guarantee you, nobody can keep right, it perfectly. Can keep perfect. uh, right. Right. After Hanukkah, don't they say everything is new after Hanukkah? Is something in luck with that Hanukkah? And any of the fruit you see on a tree for Hanukkah is probably that, 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 that year. I just made that up. Which blossomed uh, after yeah. Shoshana? Kind of to Rosh Hashanah? Yeah, you wouldn't I've have heard, it? 
but I don't think it, I can tell you. I, I, I can both. check. I don't know. I, I, heard I, I never heard of this. Exactly. My great foods. I, I wish you could all come and witness it and decide. They're green now and they go forever and it's so much. It's such a fruitful tree. Yeah. It's a problem, you know. So I can't, I don't know. I can't say after Hanukkah, they all came later. You know what I mean? I, I don't, back my mind, I remember that. I just let yeah. things drop. <laughs> Sad. I don't know. Does your tree have any blossoms on it now? I, yeah, I'll, so now I'll look. Carefully. Like, I do right. think on another tree, a lemon tree, something big, there are some blossom. I'll look. But from years past, what I see on the tree, there'll be more. I just, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, a very, very, very few. There are very few blossoms on any of them. Very few. Basically, basically it's, you know, full grown. Well, did you plant these trees, or are these, are these the trees you bought when you moved in? They were already there. They were already there. They were already there. there. If you plant them as oil, you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Huh? Yeah, or well, as years it is. Huh? Right. You planted them, my friend, you can't touch them for three, four years. Within three right. years. Right. Right. Even, yeah. if <laughs> even if they're grown, but usually when three, three four years, three or three, four years of growth. No, of growth. growth. Of growth. It growth. doesn't from zero, even if it's a little nothing. So growth right. is from seed. Well, but if it's replanted. Um, yeah, meaning it's taken from a uh, mastella from a it's not, and it's already a fully formed tree or a small tree then right then it depends how much earth you took it with that's weird that it can grow two weeks without replanting it the amount of earth that will allow it to grow two weeks without replanting in the ground then you continue the years from the mastella like, from the usually taking some earth in that. i would say the robe when i see it I'm not an expert and a rabbi either. Yeah. So, but I notice when gardeners do it, it usually is like a like a ball around. Right. Well, right. Well, dirt. Right. Well, dirt, right. I would assume it's enough for two weeks. For two weeks. I have to ask the gardener, a professional gardener, would that be enough for the tree to nurture off of two weeks without replanting it in the ground? And if so, then it's continuous. Then, then the years you, continue you from where the clock. Right. Then it's, start the clock over again. Chances are that you saw these yeah, trees. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Anyhow, I'm in the chapter here of the two months of masters for Shvid. First of all, the example we gave before is correct. He says, <coughs> that's, a, that's the example we spoke about. Without Brahma, you still need to take out. Which would be my sir Ani, the of the of the two types of Ani and Shane. Okay, so that's for that. But I don't see her discussion. This so I just skimmed through this chapter of Tumas Masters from Perot Shvi, those that are grown as Shvi produce and not sold to the Nochri at the Mechira, like in our private garden. So he just speaks about Priyat Shechanat Mashana Shmita, Shana Shmita, Patumit Tumotu Masot. Even in the eighth, eighth year, right. going to the eighth year, you still don't do too much masters if it blossomed during Shvid. Which is not the other blossomed, right? Before Shvid. Okay. And then he goes also, So he goes on to say, 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 So he goes uh, blossom, right? Uh, so he says, Any oh, fruit uh, during the winter, right. He doesn't That's give us the sign. He just so, said during the winter. Right. But to David's point, if I look at the tree now yes. very carefully, and I yes. don't see a blossom on it. I right. don't see. Then and I you know all this, those fruits were she she and okay. Right. The you moment know, you start to, seeing the blossom, see any blossom, any blossom, now you have to it, mark it. I know, so you'll but see. I, it's, I can't keep it back. No, happens, but I'll tell you, you'll see a big difference, major difference in the size yeah. of the fruit. Because I know, those are blossoms. Yeah. Come back to the now when there's a two, a, I don't need hundreds of. Yellow grapefruit. Wow, 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 wow. I don't know how farmers do it. It's crazy. Do you have natural? 
Too little, too little, too little, too little. Good. Good to enjoy that. Huh? I uh, I always say the bracha of the fruit trees is amazing. I came from America where I didn't have it, but those are the hardest thing to keep up yeah, with. Yeah, keep up with with all these alachos. It's an okay. interesting question. How do we know? Like there's no rove. Exactly there's which no fruit. Rove. No rove. You can't go by rove. Each and every one is individual because they have so so much. You understand so yeah. so much that of course, of course, you have thousands of. So that's what I'm saying. The rove says it's not. It has to be guesstimate. has to be guesstimate. What does that mean? Yes. Yes. Guessing. Wow. Wow. Guessing. Guessing. That's a new word for you. Okay. Guessing and estimating together. If you use an educated guess, educated guess. Uh huh. Right. Educated guess. Like I mean, they have to walk their fruit, their 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 part of all day and And mark each one when it's very difficult. It seems to me that since most fruits are seasonal, so you could tell by the size. Maybe that's their professional maybe, maybe eye. Maybe they're not blossoming. Can tell them, yeah. Their professional mm-hmm. eye tells them which blossom during the meter, which are porch meter, which are after meter. I guess that's how they do it. But 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 also, I don't see anything about Hanukkah, by the way. Yeah. In this chapter, it doesn't I, I, say. I don't think I made, maybe I made it up. I've, I've heard, heard something it. similar at one point too. Yeah. I think. But maybe for it's sure only the that's... sign about the hefker is really applicable for me. Effective next going to next year. Right. Right, and if people do it now, we're a little bit wrong. They're not sure, after Hanukkah day, yeah, unless they have the, unless they have vegetables there, right? Or, that's uh, not so common. But then you're telling people, you know, herbs, out. herbs, things like that. Should we tell them you're causing the evil because they're going to take the fruit, right? Not and not just so much, 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 it's very problematic, right? You're right. I, I learned that was one thing I learned. She's from the street. You always think it's Rosh Hashanah. It's not. It's this. Right. It's this. It's it's this. It's uh, this. Uh, Just for a second, where does um, not for Shemitah. Shemitah doesn't Shemitah count at all. Shemitah. Nothing to do with Shemitah. That has to do with uh, Orla, the Teravai, all those things. But Shemitah is from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. Shemitah has everything to do with all the growth except for the rule of Shemitah? Yes. Yes. Of a tree, not of uh, vegetables or, or herbs or things like that. That has nothing to do with Shemitah either. That was, that's also Rosh Hashanah. Only fruit trees, uh, meaning fruits of trees, that at the end of their third year of Orla, we, dis- we go according to Tu Bishvat and not according to Rosh Hashanah. When does the third year end? It ends on Tu Bishvat of their third year of growth. And the Netaravai year, fourth year, ends Tu Bishvat of the fourth year of their growth. But that's nothing to do with Shemitah. Shemitah goes from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah, whatever blossoms. Before Rosh Hashanah, Tashin Pei Bet this year, Shishit, but it blossoms between Rosh Hashanah this year and Rosh Hashanah next year, is Shemitah. That's, that's how we count it. Or if we talk about vegetables and herbs and, and things that grow from shrubs and things like that, then we go by Lekita. When do we, when do we yeah. pick it from the ground? We pick it from the ground after Rosh Hashanah, then it's Shemitah. If you pick it from the ground before Rosh Hashanah or after next Rosh Hashanah, then it's not. Mushrooms. Mushrooms have no shmita whatsoever because they grow from the bacteria yeah. from the air. What are the other things? What if you have you know people grow things out in pesticides and water? Water, yeah, the uh, hydro hydrophonics. So most posts can say that there's no shmita for hydrophonics either, so but it's not, not simple. Mushrooms for sure not. Are there other things like that that you're not? No. Not that well, I know. Sand, no, no. No. Yeah, they grow on benches. Yeah. They grow in all kinds of places. Ah, that's another thing. That's matzah yeah. That's when that's it's grown, question. grown about, disconnected from the ground right. because it's on the sh- plastic sheets. Right. Exactly. Long, huge plastic sheets. Hot houses, hot houses yeah. right. Yeah. Greenhouses. Yeah. So that is not simple because true that it's disconnected, but it's still considered a tzitzhe nonakuv. It's like a tzitzhe nonakuv when you have a pot that doesn't have holes in it. But still it's shmita midarabanam. You hold shmita midarabanam. But since it's in the house... Ah, that's... In Gush Ketif itself, in Gush Ketif itself, that definitely is outside the borders of the the holy land. So so that doesn't hold shmita either. 
from the point of view of, of Shmita, not from the point of view of Yishuvet Yisrael. Yishuvet Yisrael, it's included. They were Mekayim, but not Shmita. So, yeah, but that's in Gush Katif itself. We no longer okay, live uh, there. History right. right. But for us now, um, there are areas where, uh, where, where uh, there's no Shemitah. Arava. Arava Dromit for sure not. And Arava Tzfonit is a dispute, but we said Shoma Zaman and the Badat Zayda Haredis hold that even Arava Tzfonit doesn't have Shemitah at all. Even if you do it in the fields themselves with that, uh, the hot houses and disconnected from the ground. No Shemitah at all in the Arava Tzfonit is, is, is just below Yam Melach. Just below Yam Melach is Arava Tzfonit. And further down, further down south on that line is Arava Dromit. So further down is definitely not Shemitah at all. And closer to Yam Melach is uh, Neot Akikar, Ein Tamar, uh, kinds of Yishuvim there that grow a lot of produce. It's a very fruitful area to grow uh, all kinds of things there. It's a, dry land and it's a lot of minerals. It works well for all kinds of uh, fruits and vegetables that they grow there. So things that come from there, it's a dispute between Poskim if they hold Shemitah or not, but Shlomo Zaman says you don't need to hold Shemitah in those areas. You don't need to have to you don't need uh, to refrain from, from plowing and, 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 and spreading and, and planting. In parenthesis, yeah. the Rav of Amishul is not the near to go. Today, let's take that as a premise. Okay. Today, the Oh, the rob. I thought you, I thought you said the rob. The rob. Yeah, yeah, the majority. So Jerome has said the rob. Until that happens, right? Until that happens, and even then, even then, because it's only three much. things: the gan, tirosh, v'itzar. Only three things that they're right. There. Even except if we have everyone in the nachala and right, everyone's except here, for the, except for the rabbi that says otherwise. Right. Uh, wait, so the rabbi holds. Right? Believe the Rav holds Shiva Saminim. No, it's arriving. The Rav holds Shiva Saminim. Wait one second. One second. Yeah. No, 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 I know. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the Rav holds even more vast than that. Every Bore Priya Etz. Every Bore Priya Etz, Rav holds is the right to Shiva Samas. Right. 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 But I think the final Pesach and Shechon is the Gat Erosh Ve Yitzhar. All those three. Right? And the Gan is, is wheat, or, or the five grains, the five different grains, the right level to take Trumos Samasus from when majority of Jews will be living in Israel. Tirosh is grapes and wine and everything else. But even the grapes themselves as a grape, Trumos Samasus is the right And Yitzhar is olives. Olives and olive oil, right? All those, th- those three. It's not, only three. It's only three. Oh. Yeah. No, no, because the grains. No, that's so not true. It's four. It's four out of seven. Right. Like, tamar, right. pomegranate, right. limon, right. and tena, and figs. Right. And figs. Right. Those three aren't in, are not good. So I think the right there's some recent holes in all seven are doraita. Seven special species of Eretz Israel, and the Rambam holds all the bray prayer etz do right. Mm-hmm. Every food is bray prayer, yeah, that's, but not vegetables. So vegetables will never become the right, and no matter what, they only do rabbanon. Anyhow, so so these chalamot, these hot houses, where they have also disconnected from the ground because they have those sheets and just earth on top of them that they spread earth and have growing thing. They grow things from that. So some post scheme hold that there's no Shemitah whatsoever in these, no matter where they are in the country, even Tel Aviv or Yerushalayim, or mid-country, there's no Shemitah. How come? Because the Yerushalmi discusses a case where a person goes, grows things in their homes, in their houses, in, under a roof. And the Yerushalmi says that it's Suffolk Shemitah. Suffolk is the Shemitah in the house. We discussed this when we spoke about having pots in our homes with fruits uh, or with vegetables growing from them or herbs and things of that, that sort. So the post can say, since the Ushami was left at a suffix, left it doubtful whether it's Shemitah or not, and it's Minutak, meaning it's a Tzishay Nonakuv, it has no holes, it's not connected to the ground whatsoever. So those two put together make it completely permissible, not even the Rabbanon of Shemitah. 
It's completely allowed to do whatever you want. That's, that's what we said. That's mainstream alacha, most, most poski. But that's in a house, in your home, where it's not a normal place to grow things, uh, to grow fruits and vegetables. In the home, person's home, we normally don't grow fruits and vegetables. But in a, ha- in a hot house, that's wow. normally done. That's something very normal. Not because of Shemitah the, that the farmers grow it that way. All, all the years, they, they, they do it that way. It's good, for the, it's good for the plants to grow in a hot house like that. So maybe that's not considered... Insects. Right, yeah, against the uh, insects bugs insects and insects. 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 Right, right. Yeah. That's how they do the lettuce and all those. Right. So, so some posts came hold it. That's not what the Rishami held a suffix shviz on. The Rishami held a suffix shviz when it's not normal. It's not growing in the field. It's growing in your house. But this is like fields. Even though it has a roof over it, but it's in the fields and it's the proper way to grow things. All of, even going to do it. It's not specifically because of Shemitah, you wanted to get away from Shemitah, you do, so you grow it this way. It's, it's a normal way to grow things. Some say that that's not what the Yushami re, was referring to when it had a suffix about house, does it include house or not? So therefore, if it's, an, if it's, an, if it's considered like a field, so we're back to Atzitshe Inon Akuba only. So we're back to the case where it's just not connected to the ground. This is connected because of those plastic sheets. So it's the Rabbanon Shemitah. There is Shemitah Midi Rabbanon in those places. So now if you add to that the location in the country where they have these hothouses, so like in Gush Katif where it used to be, or uh, uh, of course, our Vat Rumitah Vat not even in hothouses, even in the field themselves, it's not Shemitah. But uh, let's say if we add to it Olei Mitzrayim. Olei Mitzrayim is an area of the, of the land, of the country, that only in the days of Yoshua did they conquer those areas, but not in the days of Olei Bavel, which were the ones who came second time around to, to live in the country after Galut Bavel, the days of Ezra and Nehemiah, they, they settled less parts of the land than Yoshua did. To begin with the first time. Right, much, much less people, right? right? But even eventually when they more and more came, it didn't help. They, they, they occupied less of the country. So the areas where weren't occupied by the Olei Bavel and were occupied by Olei Mitzrayim, those areas have less of Shemitah. There's still Shemitah there, but less. For example, there's no Yisul Sfichir. I haven't gotten to that, I, to that those halachos of Sfichin yet to explain what that means. But there's no Sfichin in the Olei Mitzrayim areas, and there's no Shamuv and Evad issues in those areas either. Well, we haven't learned these concepts yet, so we'll, we'll do them soon eventually when we get to them. So, but there's less holiness in those areas uh, uh, of Shemitah. So, some posts can where, say, where are they in the map? Like, in the map, so there is a map right here. Um, I would say very few sections that we occupy today in Israel, in the country of Israel, have enough kamina of being a lay mitzvah, not a lay bavel. It's mostly in Lebanon of today. So it's mostly not enough kamina. What he shows here on the map is as of Nehariah. Nehariah is very, very up north <clears throat> in today's current land, country of Israel. As of Nehariah, there's a strip, a strip of land that uh, shows the Ole Mitzrayim versus Ole Bavel. So I can't tell how many kilometers or meters into the land that strip is. He doesn't show the measurement. Away from the ocean or towards the ocean? From the ocean into the land. Wow. That strip, but I don't know how many, it's fine, he didn't clearly mark the kilometers. But for example, Rosh Nikra is definitely Ole Mitzrayim and not Ole Bavel. That's right. part of that strip. Catch one no, is way, like way. Area. You're talking about Galil Marav here, and then. Right. Okay, catch one is way inside. Lebanon, way inside. Yeah, yeah it's Lebanon. north, but it's way right. indoors. But it's way in the Oleba Valley. Lebanon. Yeah, but it's even Lebanon, Lebanon is a step. Yeah, but I'm talking about the strip that's very close to the ocean. Right. That area within Lebanon oh. is Oleba Valley. Right. Like Tzot, Don, oh, Beirut, Lebanon, Tripoli, Lebanon. all those. Oh, right. Coastal city, exactly. Oh, yeah, As of Naria, 
upwards, wow. northward. So it's barely so anything that's Mitzrayim connected there. to that. Uh, that's Olay Mitzrayim. And down was south. Was it there? Or was it like when you say Olay Mitzrayim, was it like pre Nachla or post? Like No, there was, there was, there was Shvatim there. There was Shvatim, yeah. yeah. Oh, which shave it? Uh, and Naftali, Asher. Oh, they were like. They were all the way up wow. there, yeah. Yeah, they occupied most of Lebanon back in those days. He goes all the way up to uh, Banyas, but not the Banyas that we know of. It's way, way up north, more than Tripoli, and Beirut, way, way, way more up wow. north than that. They always say you don't have Jewish meat. You don't have to come with it. Right, right, right. Right, what? Uh, right. yeah, they, they, taught, they used yeah. us as examples yeah, many, of... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes all up to Turkey. You go up to Turkey. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the occupied land. Turkey, the promise of Avra, was the Turkey where Jews actually lived? They go. Um, that I don't know, but I know that it goes up to Turkey, even not a, to Avram for sure, but not even to Avram. The Mas'e, the borders in Parshish Mas'e, the borders of the land of the Holy Land of Parshish Mas'e, go all the way up to Turkey. That's the Tehulachem Horahar. Horahar, it's not Horahar of Aaron where he died. That's in, that's in Lebanon. That's, no, that's in, in the, the east side. Sorry, that's in Jordan. 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 The east side of the Jordan River. The story with the story just of that I read yeah. that previous the, the same father was yeah. Air Force, the Jordanian Air Force. Oh, wow. Yeah. For whatever reason, somehow some kind of, kind of connection was made with Rav Kaduri. Wow. And he took Rav Kaduri and the Jordanian Air Force helicopter wow. to Harahor to Dada. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow, what a story. Do we, claim, do we say we know where it is or no? Uh, no, uh, no, Moshe's we obviously don't know, but uh, that one we know, I think. No, how Nevo, how Nevo, we may know where that is. That's the mountain he went up to see the yes. land of Israel. That could be. We don't know where he was buried, but oh, we, know, we could uh, know where how Nevo is. Yeah, the last place where he was alive on is how Nevo, right. which is also in Jordan. I don't know if we know the places. Or Kaduri was very holy and spiritual and Kabbalistic. Yeah. So, you know, so I guess he knew things. That... Wow, wow, wow. Some what a story. Never heard of that story. <laughs> Anyhow, now down south, as of Ashkelon downwards, again, there's a much, much wider strip of coastal cities, which is mainly Gaza, mainly the Gaza Strip, which is also Olay Mitzrayim and not Olay Babel. And that's where Gush Katif was. So the post can say, and in those, now in our days, the towns that are, or the Shuvim that are part of Olay Mitzrayim is, for example, Bnei Netzarim, Kerem Shalom, Nir Yitzchak, Talmei Yosef, um, Nirim, Reim, all these names, by the way, unfortunately, we hear them on radio when they are uh, bombed by the missiles from Gaza. We see, right, so Sderot. a big city relative to these guys. These right, guys. so Sderot is definitely Olay Babel already. That's too far away from the coast to be a Lay Mitzrayim. These are, Again, these are coastal they're very, towns. I've been, yeah. And oh, you've been there? Just, yeah, and stuff. You right, know, so it's Shalom. Shalom. I don't know. No, it's ah, right, Navea. right, right. But it does, it may it's called Naveh, right. It was built since, anyway. They ah, say you're right, it doesn't exist. Naveh doesn't purpose. exist. They're too small. <laughs> the problem is they get things and they don't have a warning. Are you serious? There's no time. It's like, is it, it's like throwing a ball almost. I feel it. Wow. Like no warning. But it never falls but on it, them and never. No, I made my cousin. Because it goes Rabbi past Ali them. Had yeah. In his backyard once. Oish, but they, oish, oish. like the Mechina itself, they live yeah. in. Um, the, oh, uh, uh, you know, our shelters. Shelters. So they don't need to, they don't need to run the, anywhere. I don't know about all the homes. I don't know how much. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Very bad. But often things go over them. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. Yeah, you see, Sderot, Nitivot, Ofakim, all those are definitely labor right. vel. That's early Babel already. That's indoor, inside already. But those who are closer to the Gaza Strip and to the ocean, they are Le Mitzrayim. So there, Post can say that if you have that combination of Hamamot, these hot houses, and disconnected from the ground, and the Le Mitzrayim area location, all those together, they give it an okay that there's no speed there. That was a very terrible. Uh, In, in something that occurred years ago with Shalom Zavin, um, he gave his approval, total approval on the Gush Katif when there was still Jews were still living there, to have 
anything grown from uh, that land, the sands of Gush Katif, on disconnected uh, soil and hot houses, that you can it, it can be done on shmita, shmita free, and you can right. buy it, and it's the hadrin, you know, to buy from them, and it's fine. And my father, my father, went to see him for a question totally unrelated, uh, oh, something yeah, about yeah, medical, yeah. right? Medical uh, I think right. it was the issue of jaundice uh, for brismila, uh, what numbers to go, what yeah. type of things, whatever. So uh, he came to him, mamish erev shmita of one of many shmitas, shmitas ago. Erev Shmita, Erev Shoshana of Shmita, and he saw Shomazan for the first time he ever saw him this way. He saw him very, very, I wouldn't say angry, but displeased and, and, and not a happy camper. Not a happy camper, completely not. So he asked him, What's wrong? What happened? He goes, I don't want to speak about it. I don't want to speak about it. So my father sort of tried anyhow to get into what it. Gets <laughs> <your> <laughs> what, what gets him in a bad mood? So in the end, he told him, He said, that really terrible people. Uh, unfortunately, in the Haredi world, but, but they, they don't represent anyone in, in any world. They're bad people. They put out Pachkevilim, those uh, posters that uh, they put up in all the Measherim, Geula, and all that. They put up that, no, they put out, don't buy Gush Katif produce and Shemitah year. It's, uh, you're not allowed to use it because they work the land normally in Shemitah and it's not allowed and don't buy, don't buy, don't buy. Who was signed on it? Oh, Together with other the rabbis. Name was, oh. They forged his signature oh, going the exact opposite of what is the great that the, there, there you are. There you are. You're completely that straight, that honest. Really sharp. <laughs> wow. Sharp, wow. Totally. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. So <laughs> he said he was curious because that's exactly the opposite of what I hold. Right. And I and he said to my father, there's such tzaddikim, the the Gushati people. Right. He felt there's bad. A, he felt them. bad that's for them that he's going against them. That's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the unfortunate thing is that it has to do with politics because they didn't want to, people buying from Kippa Struga uh, oh, farmers. It has to do with politics. politics. Or maybe money also because, <laughs> yeah, it's, these are We're two forces. Yeah. Versus, yeah. <laughs> yeah, versus worshiping Hashem. Oh, right, yeah, very bad. Ah, so my father told Hashem and said, so Why don't you put out a patkibil against it, saying my opinion is, is not so? He says, who do you think, which Pachkevil will, will, will people believe? The second one and the first one. They believe the first one. Who's going to believe that the second one is the right one? Yeah, because they want to go on Chumrah. So. Yeah, so, so no one's going to believe me. Yeah, they won't believe me. It's very furious, very sad. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Of course. I'm sure, I'm sure they were very surprised and they yeah. immediately contacted him and he, he, he must have told him that it was all for us. Yeah. If somebody yeah, brings... in politics. We probably yeah. discussed this, but now we're talking about the Atik's Nakum and Lord Nakum. Right. If somebody gives you a pot without a um, hole in it... Without holes? Without yeah. Hole. Okay. And, and that's good. you want to keep it alive. Right. But let's say... You, are you in any way allowed to put it outside? You understand? Yeah, you outdoors. The ground. If it's kept uh, in that pot, plate, no? yes. No, you don't even need a plate because it's no holes. No holes. No, no holes. Let's say no hole pot. No so hole pot. In other words, although some posts can regard the fact that the branches go over the pot, oh, so vapors from the ground. And there's no so issue. Some say you need a plastic sheet. Underneath the entire plant, okay, of all the parts that go out of it. Or if, if you on, do that, then it's perfectly it's fine. Or stone, you don't. Let, you don't. It's That's not enough. That's not enough. Stone. If the stone is is directly connected to the ground, not a second floor. If you put it on the second floor of your house, that's fine. Okay. Even at it's nakuv, even if it has holes it could be and no plate, on the second floor of your house and not upwards. Not a table on the first floor. It's, second floor. Right, second floor. And if you that's that, okay. Let's say it's your but first floor is not. If it's cement, 
like you know before they put the stone. I'm asking. Right, but even so, how can you say that it's considered nurturing from the ground? Why? Because all those layers have no air in them, so they're all mechuba lakarka. They're all connected to the soil mm. in some point. So it's like a uh, like a heap Lovely. of rocks. Yeah, but it's it's part of the field, is right. it? Part of the field. If you have a big rock in the field and you roll something on top of that rock, that's considered nurturing from the ground. Even though there's this rock that's in between the plant and the, and the soil, but the rock is part of the soil. And it's all one connected area, one connected location. So anything on the first floor, anything on the ground floor that's connected to the ground is considered nurturing from the ground, even ground if it's... Table. Table, on top of a table? No, ground floor. I'm talking about a table. You have a picnic table. You have, you, have a, you have a table. Yeah. And then you put the plant, put the plant on the table. In other words, it's this part, the ground, and here's the table. Exactly. But you, yeah, table right. At this point. So, well, why not? Well, it's, it's like a table. plastic sheet, I guess. Almost. Yeah, why would that be different? I guess it's sort of like a Yeah, but then sheet. it's still, yeah, but then it's still, yeah. ah, in, indoors. No, because oh, okay, we so have two cool. points here. One is to become a teacher in Onakuv. If you wanted to become in on a coop, then it's not nurturing from the ground. And the other is house versus outdoors, because house is what the Yushami said. There may not be Shemitah in the house at all. So together with the teaching on a coop, we, we hold there's no Shemitah. Indoors with the teaching on a coop. What's considered teaching on a coop? So if there are holes in the pot, even if it's on a floor that's cement and flooring and everything, it's still considered a coop. It's not good enough. Because there are holes in the pot and it's on the ground floor, so it's not considered disconnected. If, a, if it's on top of a table, ah, I think what they say is if there's Even 10 the fachim, what? The, the table is too, it's too phenomenal. Right, that's what saying. 10 fachim, right. You need 10 fachim difference, then it's okay, right. Then you're right. 10 fachim makes it a, a new reshoot. It's like second floor enough. 10 fachim is an Ten fachim is a number and a half. It's a meter. Right. Ten centimeters and um. Right. It's a meter. Uh, although a meter there's a high. sheetah that makes it less. Like right. Eighty centimeters. Like your sukkah, you want to have at least ten. Right. But there's a sheetah right. that makes it seven. So eight, here nine, to nine, make, nine, make nine. sure that you disconnect from that, make it a meter. If you want, if you're one meter high on top of the ground, top of the floor, and then you put the pot, the, the no pot hole. there. No, then even if there are holes, that's the idea. Oh, oh, because so the, the table the serves... Oh, okay. Right. Okay. If okay. there's no holes, and even if it's on the ground itself, it's okay. Oh, wait, indoors. It's not... Indoors, okay. Indoors, okay. indoors. Outdoors, it's Midera Bonham. And he holds Shemitah because it's outdoors. And it's Shinonakub, it's Shinonakub, it's Shinonakub, he holds Shemitah, Midera This is less, this is less than... This is less this than a might, meter. It's less, less than a meter. meter. This, uh, it's less than a meter. I know it comes to my waist. Right. Oh, yes. Right. Right. Yeah. right. So it's so much less than a meter. That's not good enough. Table. You have shelves in your house. You have something like. Uh, right. But second floor is definitely definitely fine. Um, but outdoors, you would need an actual sheet, plastic sheet, to disconnect that pot from the ground. A plastic sheet. So that's. That's portable, so that's connect, That's considered disconnected. <coughs> but I guess my question has to do a little bit with the fact that if something exists, you're allowed to keep it alive, not Correct. extra. Correct. So, Ukme. so, so if, if, if you exist. have this plant that exists, you just didn't have it before Shoshana, let's say. Right. So you want to keep it alive. So no, but the problem is that yeah, that's true. But if you put it outdoors. You're now creating then you're problem. then you're at least as if planting it. That's ah, a problem. Oh, I see. So if you're planting it, that's, that's not allowed because that's okay. Lotizra. So right, that's, that's the issue. That's the issue. Okay. So if you get it from someone uh, that brings it to your house, you can't take it outdoors now because it's in your house, which is considered uh, less less connected because it's. Uh, after all, under a roof, and the Rishami said there may not be Shemitah under a roof. But if you bring it outdoors, it's as if you planted it that moment. Yeah, but if it's in a planter and there's no holes. So it's rabbinically like planting. I mean, Rabbanon, because Rabbanon had a gzera of a nonakuv, atunakuv. That if someone does it for a nonakuv, for, for a pot that has no holes, they may do it for something that's nakuv. 
So if it has no holes, like putting a plate that doesn't, you see, doesn't even help. The plate doesn't even help. No holes. Outdoors. Yeah. Doesn't help. Outdoors. Exactly. Because it's still rabbinically, rabbinically. Year ago, with a pineapple, with the green part of the pineapple. Yeah. Pineapple. Cut off the green part. Yeah. Put the green part in the dirt, in the pot. So planted it, actually. Yeah. Planted. Yeah. And it started growing as a, as a pineapple now tree. It's That's how it grows from the green part. Wow. Yeah. You take yeah. a top of a pineapple. Yeah. The Where the dirt. leaves, the leaves are? The leaves, the leaves. You take the whole top. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in dirt. Yeah. Water the dirt. Wow. And then eventually the green part will grow, 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 grow. And right, right now it's in the pot, it's in the pot, on the ground, hole in the pot, in, in on the dirt. Or right. Just sitting on the Outdoors. 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 It's existed pre. It's growing, yeah. It's grown. Existed. There's no chance of fruit. There's no chance of it producing anything that might be codish. Because it's, it's, it's not, it's a young plant. Ah, it's very young. It's a young plant. The question is. It doesn't matter. Working the land has nothing to do with the produce that comes out, if it does or doesn't. You're not allowed to work the land. Even if it's a... But you can water that. You couldn't do that today. Today, you couldn't do that. No, you could You could water would exist. Right. 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 You create you water. The right. No, no. It's right. 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 You're allowed to water it, but to the, the amounts that are necessary for it to live. Yeah. Not to blossom and grow more and more, but right. to live. Doing. Yeah. When I water my plants indoors, Yes. I take I sometimes every every other one I water the plants indoors with fertilized water. Uh -huh. The question is, and I have been so that you can't do on oriented with those plants. No, you can't do that. So that's that's the fertilizer. Right. The Even fertilizer the makes it grow more and more. These are outdoors. Those so are outdoors. So take, right. Now that fertilized water, I can't pour it anywhere on my plant. I should just pour it down the toilet. Right, right. You can let water indoors. Would that be a problem? Indoors, if you have, again, you have to have a tzitzit nonaku, meaning in pots that have no holes in them, indoors. then you can do it indoors. Indoors, you can do even planting in those types of tzitzit nonaku under roof, even planting. No shmita at all. You can bring it indoors. No, you can bring it indoors, but at this point, they're a little bit big. A little big, yeah. No, so you can just do this, the, no, take no, care no, of whatever no, needs to, for it right. to, to exist. That's it, exist. Yeah. Because that's really very important. Anything that grows in the ground, if it doesn't bear any kedusha in it, like you said, a tree per se, just the tree itself, the trunk of the tree, the branches, or well, let's say you have a non-fruit tree. Uh, it's like, there's no kedusha whatsoever in that tree. The branches, the leaves, you can dispose of normally and you can whatever do whatever you want to it and no condition in it at all and yet there's Very a separate issue or not to work the ground or anything and just make anything grow even if it's not not wholly from the Shemitah point of view but the working with the land is another issue the Shabbat it's Shabbat Lashem has nothing to do with the holiness. Special farmers, I'm not yeah. Sure, but I read about, you know, they turn over fields, meaning they don't sometimes plant it and sometimes they leave it. Right. right. So that they can't do, but you don't even have to. Well, maybe you have to be here. You always think of have to be here is for is, actual produce, right. not for the land itself. Right. I, I, well, I would like, think they shouldn't do any of the stuff on Shemitah. Wow. It's part of the idea of Shemitah that one year you let, you allow the ground to rest, totally rest. Not work on anything. So I guess Dafka they say it's good for the land. Right. That they have one year of rest so they can right. they have more the land and more, has more strength. Do that. Maybe, but in this case, they'll have to do their stuff not during the year. Like right. They, they want it's to turning speak. over exactly. the ground, not shmita, right? Because that's like harisha. That's like plowing, and the plowing is our land. That's one of the five is the right time for, for planting. And it's the harisha tishbot, you mustn't do harisha. Refrain from, from plowing. Okay. Now it's 10.30. Um, what I was going to discuss, so I guess we'll keep that for next week. Um, last time, I think if I recall correctly, before the Chagim, uh, we discussed the various different types of what you can buy in the shops during Shemitah. The Etimechira, the Nochri, the Otsar Beitin, 
the Yavul Chul, all these ways. They are about Dromir, about Tzfarit, all the different types of products they can buy in the shops and the differences between them. That's what we did the last time we studied, we learned. So, by the way, I have to send out the recording. I haven't done that yet uh, with all the Chagim. I got mixed up with, uh, I got uh, distra- distracted from that. So I'll do that. I'll send out, uh, I think there are two shirim before the Chagim that were recorded and I hadn't sent out yet. So I'll do that uh, very, very soon and I'll include this one as well. Um, next week, we'll do the what's permissible and not permissible and how do we use the produce that has Jushashvis in it, how do we use that at home? To consume and to throw out and to sell and to buy all those issues of how to use the Shemitah produce, the ones that had that has Dusha Shvis in it. No, that's not true. Not true. Baiting has. Had to mechira according to those who hold that produce grown by a goy has kushvis in it, has kushvis in it, and uh, nochri also according to those who hold that. So it could be a lot of stuff that that has kushvis in it. Yeah, sure. For instance, this store that you suggested on Yeah, or on Sheshat Yamin, two stores. Yeah. Does that does that have kushvis in it? Depends which fruit or vegetable. It's eighty percent of it's the labeled. Is the back house. The back that back doesn't. Okay. But now I'm hearing that even hetemathira has issues of disposal, possibly. So it depends if we hold kedusha shviz by a go, by owned by goy. That's a huge huge dispute between the Beis Yosef and the Mabit, whether the Mabit, right? the Mabit and the Beis Yosef argued. There's a whole thing if he changes mind and then towards the end of his life. And right. I heard I heard a shir that recently that there's no way. There is no way, right? The, the Beis Yosef did not change his yeah, mind. Right, right, right. Uh, right. Like the also says that he did not change his mind, right. So the Beis Yosef held that anything owned by a Goy does not have Kedusha in it. And the Mabit said it does. Because the Goy doesn't have the power to uh, eliminate the Kedusha of the land. But Halacha Lemaise, it's a dispute between the Chazanish, holding, almost obviously, although... Wow. Yeah, Mahmir, wow. that there is Dusha Shviz in Goyish produce. And against the Chazanish, we have the Mina Yerushalayim. Mina Yerushalayim, all the generations, was not to hold Dusha Shviz in Goyish produce. So uh, I would assume it's safe to follow the opinion that there is no, like Beis Yosef. Beis Yosef is big enough to smoke a lot. Super right. Shemitah in Israel it has to do with disposing. You'll see. It's, it's right. Because right. you'll have your chicken bones and you'll have this, and then right. That's that was the big lesson. A veg- Baking is a little easier. You mean in a vegetable soup with no, vegetables? Let's say you had a meal right. and you had um, no chicken rice. bones have no kedusha in them. No, so, yeah. but then you can't. I was told. I remember for years past. You can't put your oats or baiting in the same disposal. Right, put, true. No, true, so people true. don't know. It's, yeah, right, right, right. It's like, start separating your garbage. Don't think about it at all. Right? Right, I know, I know. You separate yeah. your garbage. You think this is garbage, that garbage. And, and that's not right. classic horror. I mean, not to go off the tangent. That's not classic horror. No, because even on Shabbat, you're allowed yeah. to. Because it's psolet be psolet. They're both psolet. They're both oh, going wow. to the uh, oh, disposed no, but when we learned Borer, we said if you prefer that size apple to that size, now well, I'm joking. Now, let's, no, that's not like, yes, because that's ochel, <laughs> right? What you prefer is the ochel. We do not want his psolet, but here you don't want any of it. Right, you're throwing right. both of them away. So you right. it. By the way, we do that every single Shabbos, regardless of, of Shemitah. when right. we throw things into the sink. Yeah. So we have the. Uh, we have oh, that uh, mess in the drain, right? The drain. Oh, yeah. So the liquid goes down True. and the solid stays up. That's boring. Oh, Jamie, Jamie's oh, she wants no, you mean it. You mean for it to stay stuck. Right. That's why you put it there versus the garbage. Because you don't have the liquid. Right. Because you want the liquid to go down. So the answer is solid to solid. Solid to solid. Garbage to garbage is no boring. It's all garbage. We all want it out. Garbage. Even though we're separating the garbage, it doesn't matter. You let us right. It's going down. It's garbage. We're setting up on top. It's garbage. So, right. Going to be going exactly. That's a good.
That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> so that's a letter. Yeah. Okay. So that was the next week. We'll do the uh, how to use the. How is your son doing? So, how's it going? Take care, everyone. Have a Shavuot Tov.